What is up, my friends? I, I forgot my intro. Cool. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam, and today I am going to help you plan your garden. And I'm going to show you how to plan your garden while I'm planning my garden because two birds, one stone. So before I get into the actual planning, and I'll put some timestamps down below if you just need help with like some particular part of gardening. But for now, I'm going to give you a few little things before you get going that are just a good idea. And the first one being testing your soil. If you have not already tested your soil, this is just means you're going to take little samples from a few places in your garden. You're going to mix them up. You're going to dry them. You're going to pick all the crap out of it. And then you're going to send it off to a soil testing facility. They have some tests you can do at home at like Home Depot and stuff like that, but I've never used them. I have no idea how they work, but I know that for me, we can ship them out to UMass and they have like a whole soil lab there and they'll give you a very detailed report. And it's just a good thing to do. You don't want to be planting in like, you know, leady soil or something, but this will also tell you the kind of amendments that you need to add to your soil. And when it comes to growing crops, especially vegetables, soil is everything. So if you remember nothing else from this video, just remember this, that your soil really determines everything. It determines how healthy your plant is. It determines the yield that you get. The health of your plant determines how much pest pressure you're going to be dealing with. It's just, it's a super, super important to get a hold of your soil. And that brings me to my other pre-planning thing. If you have not started composting and you are able to, even if it's just a heap on the ground, which is all mine is, um, do that. Do it yesterday, do it ASAP because, um, buying compost gets very expensive <laughs> onto the gardening. So we all love the seed catalog season, right? And it is well upon us. It is time to order. If you haven't ordered, I'm going to encourage you to do it after you watch this video. So before you go, just go off the walls with the seed catalogs, you're going to want to make a list of what you actually eat because you're going to open those seed catalogs and you're going to see all of those incredibly beautiful little vegetables things you probably haven't even eaten before. And you're just gonna wanna order one or two or 20 of everything. And I advise you to stick to your list. And on that note, you also wanna consider what are your preservation methods that are available to you? Are you able to can? Are you willing to learn? Do you have a way to dry things? Do you have a dehydrator? Can you, you know, tie bundles and dry them that way? Uh, can you freeze and preserve things? You're just going to want to think about that. You don't have to have everything figured out now, but it's a good idea because sometimes, well, pretty much most of the time when you're a new gardener, you tend to over plant and if you don't time it outright, which is something we're going to talk about in this video, you can end up with too much stuff. And then a lot of it will go bad and it's just, it happens to the best of us, <clears throat> me. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I plan my garden. Sit down, get very cozy, enjoy a nice day, a nice evening, whatever time you have, and just go through your seed catalogs. And you're gonna wanna hold on to these for at least the beginning of the growing season because they contain a lot of information about the seeds that's not necessarily gonna come on the packet. And it's just, I find it easier to just throw little tabs or sticky notes or whatever, fold dog ear the pages, and then you can come look back at them later on if you need a little bit of advice on how to plant things, what kind of yields you're looking at, how many days to maturity, things like that. And these will also come in handy when we're planning. So I am going to cut in a little shot of all the seed catalogs that I've gotten so far this year. And you will notice very quickly that when you sign up for a few of them or you order from a few places, that you will end up with a ton of seed catalogs by the spring. So if you're not into that kind of paper waste or, or whatever, you're gonna wanna be careful because they will start sending them to you whether you ask or not sometimes. And of course, don't forget about online only retailers because a lot of them have decided not to use catalogs anymore because of the waste and because of the time or expense, whatever. And they have a much more expansive and more updated catalog online. So that's always something you wanna check before you order things. So for me, the two key players in my garden organization are my garden calendar and my garden journal. So I also have a wall calendar over here 
that's for when I'm going in and out, you know, I'm doing something very quickly in the garden. You know, I just want to glance and look at what the date is. That's what that calendar is for. It's just a catch all. I'm setting myself up for success. So if you are someone who has a hard time sticking with, you know, a garden journal alone, maybe having a couple things laying around like this will help you out because they just sort of catch notes as I go through the season. And then at the beginning of the next season, I can kind of look them all over and organize them. Here is my last year's garden calendar. And this is just a calendar from the Dollar Tree. It was a dollar. It's just a flimsy little whatever calendar. The one I got this year is actually even flimsier. It has like these Bible thin pages. So I actually have to write in pencil in here, which isn't a bad thing anyway. And this is just something I got in the hag. I left it on my nightstand, I believe. At the time this year, I will leave it on my desk here and I'll just keep notes. And that is when I plant things, when I see things pop up, when pests show up, uh, it's a good to keep a note of that so that you can be prepared for them the next year before they get there. So for me, probably the most key thing about the calendar is the little countdowns that I have for the last frost date in the spring and the first frost date in the fall. So that gives me 12 weeks, usually is when I start counting, all the way down to one and I can look very quickly and know how many weeks out I am to having that last frost and it being safe for me to put everything outside. So you'll notice that the back of your packets and the information in seed catalogs is usually given to you in weeks. So it will say, start this seed six to eight weeks before your last frost. And that makes it so that it's applicable wherever you just have to do a little bit of math. I hate math, so I do it all right away, and then I just have to look at it later. It's perfect. We are at week nine, so I've got nine weeks until I can probably put out most of my stuff. So I'm going to be showing you how I organize my seeds by those weeks in my little seed organizer. Here, I'll show you. So I'm just going to show you what I did to make the dividers that I put into my seed organization little containers there. I actually got those at Staples. They're supposed to be CD holders, you know, those old things we used to listen to music on. Um, so I'm just going to cut out some old cereal boxes and make myself little dividers and I'm going to separate them in weeks. You can do this in whatever weeks make most sense to you. I tend to do two to four and then I'll do four to six and then I will do eight to 10 and 10 to 12. So those are usually the most common that I've found and that's how I do it. So then I'll just put all the seeds back and then that way, whenever I'm at, you know, say week eight, I can go into the week six through eight and I can just grab all of those seeds. It makes everything so much easier. I can just take out that stack of seeds for that week put it in another container on my desk or whatever. And then it's just grab and go. It's, it's low thought. I do not have my vegetable seeds organized that way, but I do have them placed in a way that they go from front to back in the order of when you generally plant them. And like all of my direct seed after last frosts are in the back. And you know, the stuff you start in the spring is toward the front. So they are roughly organized like that, but they're grouped together by type of vegetable. Okay, so back to the calendar. You're gonna go through your seeds and you're gonna sort them out by the week. And then you are able to sort of write down in your calendar or your journal, wherever you decide to do it. If you put it on the wall calendar, that works too. Um, just when you should start sowing or transplanting out certain things. And if you want to do a little extra, you can even count the weeks to when you should be harvesting because that information will also be on the back of your seed packet. And you can even write that in your calendar so you will know, um, and this is especially handy with things like root crops, carrots, things like that. You'll know that they're probably close to being done. You're still probably going to have to check things and it may be off a little bit, but it's a good thing to have in mind. Another way to track that in a way that is kind of lazy and you don't have to do work later is to write it on the back of the plant identification tag that you stick near your plants if you use those. I recommend getting a garden marker if you do that because they are UV proof and they are awesome. You could also paint rocks if you don't want to have plastic tags in your garden. That's fun. So some things I have in my garden calendar this year, um, I have this little expected storm tab that I can move around my calendar just in case there's a storm coming up because here in New England, we have 
two different springs, and right now we are entering fake spring, first spring, uh, faux spring, it's not spring, but it sure feels like it about two days a week. I have a note in here to amend my beds, which I have already started doing outside. I have a note to fertilize my garlic next week because that is something that um, I made sure I wrote down last fall. And I also have some notes on when to start a few things and when I should see a few perennials in the garden popping up. So that's just going to give me a little bit of a heads up. And now I can remember I need to go out, make sure the mulch is nice and snug over my bulbs that keep trying to come up because we're probably going to get a few more snowstorms. So they'll be fine, but it's nice to have a little warm blanket of mulch. So we are about 64 days out today. And I'm able to just figure that out very quickly because of my cool little calendar. Another thing you can find on the internet are these planning calendars. This one came from Hudson Valley Seed. They give you just like a visual, if you're more of a visual person, this will give you an idea of when you should start things indoors, direct seed them outside. See on this cute little planting guide right here, I am right around here at week nine. So this is the uh, little colorway up here for direct sowing outside. And up here they're saying you can direct sow onions, spinach, arugula, radish, and peas right now outside. And then starting indoors in here in this colorway right here, we've got collards, kale, tatsoi, kohlrabi, and bok choy. And I've already started all of my onions, my leeks, artichokes, celery, and these three I will probably be passing on. So just going off the seed catalog, we've already got a bunch of stuff that we can get started. I know I'm gonna write them on my little sticky note here, put them on the date that I wanna get them planted and make sure they get done. And as they get done, I'll probably take the sticky note off, record it in here or my journal and chuck the sticky note. So I can tell you a lot of seed packets do not have that information of how far out you need to start them. So. Um, if you do have to figure that information out, a lot of them will say how many days it takes to germinate. You can see this right here. It takes about 21 days to germinate. So you're going to think 21 days to germinate. You'd like your plants to be usually between like four and six weeks old, unless there's something like cucumbers or anything like that, which I just direct seed, but you want those to be closer to like two weeks old if they're big seedlings. But these would be smaller seedlings. So I would give these at least maybe four to six weeks before they went outside, I would add that in with the 21 days. And then that's how I sort of came to this. 10 weeks before last frost is where I want to start these just to make sure that I have a nice strong plant to go outside. And I just write that information on the seed packet. And as I get rid of these seed packets, I do hold on to my empties so that if I wrote any notes on the packet, I can keep those in something like my garden journal. <laughs> It's a bit chaotic. Now, the garden journal. I have this beautiful book. Mike's mom and dad gave this to me. I love it so very much. Um, they watch my videos, so hi. So my garden journal is awesome. I love, I love this personally because it's just become a way to record everything that I've done in the garden, the things that I've seen, um, what worked and what didn't when I'm reading various like herb books or taking classes online, I will take notes in here. Yeah, so it's just, I'm a researchy person. I wanna write a book eventually. So this kind of stuff is pretty, pretty key if I wanna write about things like this later. So that's what my garden journal is. It's just more of a long form way for me to keep track of what happens in the garden recipes I like, preserving methods, um, things like that. It's sort of a witch's book of shadows for a gardener. That's the garden journal. So now that you have your calendar, you've picked out a gardening journal if you're gonna do that. You have your seeds sort of in order of operation so you know when you need to start them or plant them outside. Um, you can start thinking about visually how you want your garden to look. So now when it comes to doing the garden layout, you can do this any way you like. I tend to like to have a visual and I will show you how I make that visual useful for myself for the entire season. So I'm just sitting down with um, some rulers and stuff and drawing out my garden from memory. This does not have to be, you know, accurate to size, to scale, anything like that. This is just a visual aid for you. 
and it's going to make it easier when you're deciding which crops you want to put where and as you plan out your succession planting which means say if a radish takes six weeks to grow from seedling to completed radish you're going to want to plant them every two weeks or so so you can have a constant supply of radish if that's what you want so here's what i ended up with after the first pass of drawing this is just a rough outline of my garden and I broke it up into sections so I would have more room to write but this is about the layout as it would look in my garden. So now I'm going to take these little miniature sticky notes and this is how I'm going to think about where I want to put everything in my garden. And this way I can move things around, I don't have to stick to anything and I'm also going to use a pen to put down where all my perennials are that are not going to get moved this year just so I know where they are and of course the back garden has a lot of those so that garden will have less annuals put into it. So this is what I ended up with in the end. Okay so I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I hope I didn't just confuse you more but if you have other questions please put them down below. I can do a part two if you like and stay tuned because I am actually doing a Q&A next while I pot some seeds that I asked some people on Instagram about their general garden planning questions and um, I'll be answering those in that. All right friends so I will catch you very soon in the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Bye!